Good morning. Today is April 20th, 2020, Monday. Um, we will discuss what body language is, and you will watch a video about body language. We'll answer questions about the video. So we were supposed to do this on Friday, but um, I decided just to move um, all of this today so that um, you are not um, doing too many things. Okay, so um, let's start talking about what body language is. Okay, so let's open this PowerPoint slide. Body language. What is body language? Body language is when you express yourself by not using words, but by using a part of your body to express what you want. Okay, so we will look at different examples of body language just so you understand what this means. So example number one, how do you know that she is angry or mad? Okay, just by looking at her, she's not saying anything. Just by looking at her, how do you know that she is mad? You can see it by the look on her face. You can see the eyebrows, okay, and the forehead, okay, um, telling you that, hey, she looks like she's mad. And also look at her eyes. It's very serious, okay? So you have the furrowed, eye, uh, furrowed forehead. You have the serious eyes. She's not smiling at all so you can say that her facial expression which is a part of body language so you can say that her facial expression shows that she is mad without her having to say anything so that's part of body language example number two how do you know that she is trying to remember something so when your eyes move up to the left or to the right um, that means that you're trying to remember something. This is another example of body language. So you're looking at her eyes and then you can say that, you know, she is trying to remember something that happened. So she is not telling you that she's doing this, but just by looking at her, you know that that's what she's doing and that's what's happening, okay? So those are um, two examples of body language. Um, today, you guys will learn uh, different kinds of body language because you will be watching a video about it. So I will show you guys the questions that you have to answer about the video. Um, the first one is, how do you help your body when you cross your arms? That's the first question. Second question, what other body language do people do to self-soothe? Remember, self-soothe was a vocabulary word that you learned last Friday. So what other body language do people do to self-soothe? Number three, the man coming out of the flower shop. Um, how did Mr. Navarro find out that the man is a mole or spy and he's not American but from Eastern Europe? So clue, what was his body language um, doing when uh, he was holding the flower? Okay, so this was the clue that made him realize that that man is a spy and is not an American like he says that he is, okay? And number four, what does your lip do when something bothers you? What does your lip do when something bothers you? So um, there are two things that you do. So see if you can um, figure out what those two things are from the video. And number five, how do you know if a person is threatened by your question? How do you know if a person is threatened by your question? So um, what body language do they show that they feel threatened? Okay. So let's um, start watching the video. The video is basically Mr. Navarro explaining to you um, what different body language would mean. He is a former FBI agent, and this was his job um, in the FBI when he was working there. He would look at the body language of criminals and figure out if they are telling the truth or not. Or, if I'm using the vocabulary word that you learned last pr Friday, if the um, suspect is this trying to deceive them or not. Okay, so um, so that's why body language is very important in law enforcement. So let's start watching the video. Remember that you have to answer those five questions 
um, after the video and send it to me by 5 p.m. today. Um, let me add subtitles. Okay. Nonverbals are anything that communicates but is not a word. The public knows them as body language. How we dress, how we walk, have meaning, and we use that to interpret what's in the mind of the person. My name is Joe Navarro, and for 25 years I was a special agent with the FBI. My job was to catch spies. Most of my career I spent within the National Security Division. A lot of it had to do with looking at specific targets, and then it was about, well, how do we get in their heads, and how do we neutralize them? Our security is based on nonverbals. We look at the person through the peephole. We look at who's behind us at the ATM machine. We know from the research that most of us select our mates based on nonverbals. So we may think we're very sophisticated, but in fact, we are never in a state where we're not transmitting information. There's a lot of myths out there. The ones that stand out is if you cross your arms, that it's a blocking behavior. That's just nonsense. Even when you don't like the person that is in front of you, this isn't to block them out. It's actually to self-soothe. Because in essence, it's a self-hug. When you're sitting at a movie and you're watching, you're going to cross your arms. You're waiting for somebody, you tend to do this. What's interesting is we do this behavior more in public than in private. The other one that really stands out is as we think about something, we may look in a certain way. As we process the information, we may look in another way. It's certainly not indicative of, of deception, and it really shouldn't be used that way. All we can say is the person is processing the information. The other misconceptions are that if the person clears their throat, touches their nose, or covers their mouth, they're lying. We do these behaviors as self-soothers. They're, they're pacifying behaviors, scientifically and empirically. There's just no Pinocchio effect. And people who prattle that and say, well, we can detect deception because the person touches their nose or covers their, their mouth, that's just sheer nonsense. We humans are lousy at detecting deception. Espionage work is often nowhere near what we see in movies. And in one of the cases, we had information from another country saying, you have an American we think is actually a mole who somehow entered the United States, is able to pass as an American, but he's here working for a hostile intelligence service. And just fortuitously, he was videographed coming out of a flower shop. We're looking at the video, and everybody in, the, in our small unit, we were saying, well, there's not much there. You know, he's coming out of the shop, getting in his car. And I said, stop the film right there. Just as he came out of the shop, he took the flowers, and most Americans tend to hold the flowers by the stock so that the flowers are up. This individual took them and grabbed the stock and then held the flowers so that they were facing down. And I said, that's how they carry flowers in Eastern Europe. Rather than confront him about, are you a spy, I decided to do what's called a presumptive. So as I sat there with him, I said, would you like to know how we know? And he had this look on his face, and, and I said, it was the flowers. And then he confessed. When I came into law enforcement, I thought it was all about the confession. It's really about FaceTime. In my 25 years in the FBI, it was a rarity that a person didn't eventually uh, reveal what I needed to know because we would sit down and have these very lengthy uh, conversations. I look at behaviors to do an assessment. What is this person transmitting in relation to any stimuli? My further questioning comes from my observing these behaviors. The first thing I look at is I look at the hair. Does it look healthy? Does it look well-groomed? The forehead is very interesting because a lot of times we reveal stress 
a lot of the things that we have gone through life are often etched in the forehead. I look at the eyes to see if they're red or not enough sleep. This small area here between the eyes called the glabella, it's one of the first areas that reveals information to us. Most often when we don't like something, we do that bunny nose of uh, I don't like. We don't really know what our lips look like and we tend to compress them. When something bothers us, when something really bothers us, we tend to suck them in the mandibula and look at the cheeks. We may do something like this. We'll, we'll rub our tongue against the inside of the cheek. But when we try to hide it, then it tells me that this person is trying to do some perception management. And if they are, I want to know why. At the neck, I want to see if there's any head tilt because head tilt, the person is more relaxed. The minute the head tilt goes away, there's usually some issue. I'm looking at the shoulders. You ask somebody a question and they don't know, both shoulders shoot up very quickly. And then I look at the hands. When something's troubling us, we tend to stiffen our fingers, interlace them, and almost like a teepee, we move our hands back and forth very slowly. This is to be differentiated from when we do the steeple, which we do in this position. When something's at issue, we tend to put our hands on our hips and we become very territorial. This is called arms akimbo. But look how it changes when we put our thumbs forward and then it becomes one of more of I'm inquisitive. But I also look for any behaviors of ventilating because men tend to ventilate at the neck and we do at the very instant something bothers us. And then I look at the legs to see if there's any brushing of the legs with the hands, which is again to pacify. And then the feet. Do I see any behaviors such as wiggling of the feet, kicking of the feet? If I ask a question and all of a sudden the feet withdraw and are crossed, perhaps the person feels a little threatened by that question. So when we study nonverbals, it's not about making judgments. It's about assessing what is this person transmitting in that moment. Okay, so let's stop there. So you should be able to answer the questions um, by... listening to the information in the video. If you need to hear it again, you can rewind this. I can also send you guys the YouTube link for the video. Just make sure that you stop at 7.08 if you are going to the YouTube video to listen to it again. Okay, so remember that I need to work by 5 p.m. today. If you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know. Have a good one. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.